Hey there, it's Izzy here again. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a sensor type of effect in Final Cut Pro 10. It's super easy to do. You can add this to your video very easily just using the built-in tools in Final Cut Pro. To demonstrate this, I have this video clip here of Aiden, and you can see there's his face, and we're gonna censor him out. Okay, so I'm gonna move the playhead to the very beginning of my project here, and then I'm gonna go into my effects browser, and I'm gonna look for sensor. Now, you'll find it under stylize, and then you'll have to scroll down. It's alphabetized, but you can find sensor. And you just click and drag on that effect and bring it out on your clip and you just drop it. And what that's gonna do is in the inspector, if you have the inspector open, if you don't have it open, just click on this button. But if you have it open, you'll see that here it is. And you'll also see that there's some on-screen controls. Now, you can make some adjustments using the on-screen controls, but for additional ones, you have to go to the inspector. So let's talk about on-screen first. What I can do is adjust the center of my effect by just clicking on this center circle here and moving it around. You can see that I can adjust what is being censored there in the image. And so I'm just going to put it over his nose here. You can also adjust how big the censorship area is by grabbing the outside circle and dragging. You can make it bigger or smaller. Okay, so I'm going to make it maybe be around there or so. Now beyond that, if you want to make additional adjustments, you need to go the inspector. So for example, I can adjust the amount of the censorship so I can bring it all the way down to where there's no censoring, no pixelation at all, and then I can increase it all the way back up to 100, which is where I'm gonna leave it. And also you can adjust the method. So for example, right now it's on pixelate, but I can change it to blur, and you can see the area's blurred out now. I can also change it to darken. I prefer the pixelate method here for this. The radius is just the same thing as the size, that's how big the circle is there, so I can adjust it the way I want it. And then of course you can adjust the center point manually in the inspector as well. And finally, you can invert it. If you click here, you can see that everything else now is censored except for his face. So it has the opposite effect there. I'm not sure why I would actually use that, but there you go. Okay, I'm gonna uncheck that to reverse it. Now I've applied the effect, but let's see what happens if we play back the video clip here. You can see that eventually his face gets outside the area, and that's because we need to sort of track that. We need to animate the censored area to stay over his face. The way we're gonna do that is I'm gonna move the playhead to the very beginning of the clip, and we're gonna do our traditional type of keyframing. Let me close down the effects browser here, give myself a little bit more room. So in the inspector next to center, if I hover over this area, the keyframe, the add keyframe button appears. And if I click on that, it turns orange, letting me know that there's a keyframe there now. And of course, what you do with the keyframe is you put the playhead where you want it to start, that you set the keyframe. So on that frame, this parameter will be exactly this. So the center will be exactly there on that specific frame. Now what I can do is I can move the playhead forward all the way to the very end of the clip. And then I'm gonna go back one frame using the left arrow on the keyboard. And then I could just click and drag to move this over his face again. So maybe something like this. And you can see that automatically Final Cut Pro 10 adds another keyframe here. So once you add one keyframe, any adjustments you make further on down the timeline or anywhere else in that project, you are going to add additional keyframes. If I scroll through this, I just wanna make sure it stays over his face. Now it's pretty close, but let's do this. Let's grab the playhead. I'm just gonna click and drag. And when I see a place where it starts to stray, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to click to adjust and just drag it right over his face again. I'm gonna make some little adjustments now. And you can see that what happens is every time I do that, it creates another keyframe in my project. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. It's tracking along pretty nice. Oh, right there, it's starting to show his eye there a little bit. So I'll just click and drag to bring it over. And let's see, there we go. And now I think we are done. Yes, okay, so it's looking pretty good. It's kind of moving along. And it's nice because you could just set the specific keyframes and then Final Cut Pro 10 will add all the animation between them. Okay, let's do this again on this clip. I'll open up the effects browser. I'm just gonna drag sensor in and I'll close down the effects browser. I'll move the effect over his face and I'll shrink it down, make it a little bit smaller like this. And let's set a keyframe just to make sure it stays right there. So once again, on the center parameter in the inspector, and then I'll move to the very end and go back one frame and do the exact same thing. I'll move this over his face. You can see once again, there's a keyframe automatically set there. And now if I move the playhead, it's gonna do a pretty good job. Let's see here. I think it's probably just a little bit to the left too much there. So let's do this. And you can see that it's moving along with his face, doing a good job. And if I go all the way to the end, looks like it stays there. So it's tracking very nicely. So I've added the censorship effect to two different clips very quickly using the built-in effect inside Final Cut Pro 10, the sensor effect. 
And I animated it to follow his face to keep him, make sure he's censored. So you can censor all the video you want to now using Final Cut Pro 10's built-in tools. Isn't that awesome? There you go. Hopefully you found the information in this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one.